Hello and welcome to video 35 in my Rigging in Maya series. All the main systems are in place, so it's time to start thinking about making them move the model. So in this video, we're going to look at skinning and painting skin weights. The difference with the approach this time is we're going to look at how to use NG Skin Tools, which is a popular skinning plugin, and something I've been asked to cover many times before. Now don't worry if this isn't something you're interested in, Many of the techniques shown in this tutorial can be transferred to Maya's native weight painting tools. You can also check out my earlier video on skin weights, where I focus entirely on working in Maya. Before we start work, I wanted to ask you something. Are you enjoying these videos? And would you like to see more? Well, if so, there are a number of ways you can help support future content. The first is to simply head over to my coffee page and treat me to a coffee to say thank you. The second is to head over to the Ant CGI store. Here you can download the assets for each of my courses, but don't worry, there are plenty of free downloads available too. The third way you can help is to join the Ant CGI club. Membership starts from as little as 99p a month, and in return you can earn yourself some exclusive rewards. These include member-only videos, a limited edition Ant CGI pin badge, and a discount on all Ant CGI merchandise. There are a few ways you can join. The first is to simply click the join button below this video and become a member of this YouTube channel. The second is to head over to my Patreon or Coffee pages and become a member there. So there you go, the future of this channel and its contents is in your hands. To get more information on how you can help, follow the link on the screen or in the description below. So first of all, where do you get NG Skin Tools and what does it cost? Well, that's easy. You just head to the website and download it. As you can see, there are paid versions, but there is also a free version. So I would recommend you download this first and use it to evaluate it and assess whether you can bring it into your workflow. Personally, I would. There's some documentation to help with installation and a few basic videos to get you started. OK, so let's look at our scene. So here is Dino, our Labrador. And the rig is ready, with all the joints, systems and controls in place. If you remember, as we built this, we also added these quick selection sets. They hold the main joints, which we are going to bind. So we can quickly select these, and that's all the joints selected for us. And as well as the main follicle joints, we also have the tail, head and paw joints too. With the joints selected, we just select the models we want to bind them to now. So these here, and go to Skin, Bind Skin. I'll just reset these. And all we need to do is change bind 2 to selected joints because we aren't working with a single hierarchy. And to make weight editing easier if you're using Maya's native tools, I would recommend changing weight distribution to neighbour. This will force the weights you change to stay locally so you won't end up with stray weight values being applied around the model. OK, let's bind that. The model now follows the joints, but as you can see here, we need to change how it deforms. This looks very unnatural. We're also getting this odd shape here. So what we need to do is go in and play around with how each joint influences the vertices around it. In Maya, we would go to Skin, Paint Skin Weights and open the tool. And this is what we would use. If I wanted to focus on the spine joints, I could put spine in here and it will filter just those joints with spine in their name. We can select the joints and you can see how they are influencing the model with this grayscale fall off. So white would be fully influenced and black not influenced at all. You can then use these tools to interactively paint the weight values onto the model. It's a nice way to work and you will find that some artists hate it, while others find it therapeutic in a way. OK, so as you know, we aren't going to be using these, so let's open NG Skin Tools. 
Now this is version 1. And this is the newer version, version 2. Now I'm showing you both because at the moment I do still prefer to use version 1. So we'll focus on that for the main part of the video, but we will look at version 2 later to see what improvements there are. The reason I still use version 1 is I found the current build of version 2 to be a bit buggy, and there are some elements I'm not a big fan of. Now if you're watching this and only version 2 is available, don't worry, because a lot of the key features are exactly the same. So let's go back to version 1, and select the model we want to work on. You can see that the Initialize Skinning Layers button is now active. For us to work on this model, we first need to initialize it. So now on the right, we have a list of the joints which are influencing the model, and on the left are the available layers. And these act like the layers in Photoshop or any paint application. We can create a new one for the head, maybe one for the tail, and we can work on these areas independently, and each layer will add to the one before it. But we will come back to layers later. If we go to the outliner, disable show DAG objects only, and search for NG skin, we can see that there is a new NG skin tools node in the scene, and this has skin cluster 13 in its name. This is just to show that this node is tied to the skin cluster on the dog's model. This will store all the custom data generated by the tool. So this will be the layer information, mirroring associations and things like that. If we go to the NG Skin Tools menu, under Edit, we have the option to delete all these custom nodes in the scene, or just from the selected model. Now deleting won't destroy the weights that you've spent a long time working on. Instead, they are baked into the skin cluster, which is pretty cool, and it means that you can pass this on to other people who don't have NG skin tools, and all that skinning information is retained. And I do find that sometimes, if I'm working in NG skin tools, but then the joint influences change, or I have to switch to Maya's native tools for some reason, the NG skin tools data won't update, so I have to delete the nodes and then initialize the model again. It kind of bakes and resets the tool this way. OK, let's get rid of this. As you can see here, we have a lot of joints in this model. But, like with Maya's tools, we can filter the joint names. So we could search for all the rear joints on the left. And here they are. What we can also do is list a few. So head, jaw, and eye. And we can see all those joints now, which is really useful if you're working on the head, for example. So we could put L underscore star, and it would list everything with L underscore in its name. You can also filter the joints so only the ones with weight values are shown. OK, let's focus on the spine for now. Here are the main painting tools. They are currently disabled because we haven't enabled painting mode yet. So let's click this to turn it on. Let's select a joint first. You don't need to though at this stage. And click paint. The tools are now available to use and the dog has changed to a rainbow of colors. These represent all the joints and how each one is influencing the model. Here is the joint we are working on highlighted in blue. You can see the influence is brighter. If we select some of the other joints, the influence changes slightly. It's quite subtle though. We can change the display down here, so we just see the current influence in grayscale. You can also pick walk up and down this list using the arrow keys. I prefer to work using grayscale because it's a lot easier to see the influence gradient. The problem is, these are quite weak influences. They are very soft and not precise. What we can do is change these default weights under the Edit Weights tab. 
we can use the assign weights from closest joint tool to reapply them, making the vertices influenced more by their closest joint. With all influences available in the skin cluster enabled, it will rework all the weights, so be warned. You can use the selected influences in lister option instead if you just want to work on a specific joint. So let's redo everything and we will leave the intensity set to high. So assign this and you see the influence is whiter meaning it will follow this joint more closely. Plus we have a nice edge loop around the dog's body. Let's check the other joints. Okay. This has given us a better starting point, but the weights are maybe a bit too solid. Let's soften them next. And we do this under the Relax tab. I'm going to use a low intensity and have the number of steps set to around 15. This is because I only want to smooth the weights in a very subtle way. Okay, let's apply this. And that's better. These sorts of weights will make for a more organic looking movement. So now we have the base weights defined, we can start to go in and rework them. And the tools are pretty much the same as Myers. We have these brush shapes, so we can work in a number of different ways with softer and harder brushes. There are the replace, add, scale and smooth paint operations too, just like with Myers paint weights tool. Replace will swap the current weight value for the one defined with the intensity slider. So this is good for quickly stamping an exact value or gradually removing weights. Add will build up a value gradually with each stroke. And smooth just softens the weights. There's also the scale and sharpen option, but to be honest, I never really use these. Okay, let's look at the first spine joint. So it looks like there isn't any influence here, so let's add some. Let's use replace and set intensity to one. And maybe the softer brush. Let's paint. So that's a more defined white now because we had intensity set to one. Let's undo that. If we set intensity to zero, now it doesn't exactly paint nothing. What it's actually doing is painting the value zero. So it's erasing the weight values. If we use a small value, this time it paints a fainter gray. So the joint is only affecting these vertices by a value of around 0.19. If we use add instead, you see we can gradually build up the influence because each stroke is adding 0.12 to the values. This obviously fades towards the outside of the brush because we're using a softer brush. Another useful option is interactive mirror. This will copy the stroke on one side over to the other, like this. Although on this model it's a bit slow and that's because this is a subdivision surface model. It may work better with the proxy model. Let's turn that off. So it's much quicker with it disabled. And to be honest, I just find it easier to use the mirror tool to copy the weights to the opposite side. This is a powerful tool in NG skin tools, but we will come back to that later. Okay, so the way I like to work is to move down the spine and paint each joint in turn, adding a more defined value first and then pulling it back and softening it later. Although this would work better if we posed the front leg so we can see how it's influencing the chest. Okay, that should work. Let's go back. We want to try and follow this around the body, along the same edge loop where possible. So, let's add some influence here and work our way around. Next joint, number three, and follow this edge down. Now joint number four. And here we can steal back some influence and pull this section into the body. Because this is a subdivision surfaces model and Mayer is smoothing it for us, there may be some vertices that we can't reach. So I'm going to press one to drop to the base mesh or the proxy version. 
You see, the vertices are actually down here, so that's why we couldn't select them. We can paint these now and pull them back up. That's better. Now joint number five. This looks okay for now. Needs a few tweaks, but looks good. And six is okay too. Ah, so seven needs to influence the belly area. The same with joint eight. It needs to weight to these vertices. Joint nine needs to affect the base of the tail and around here. And under here. OK, let's pose the rear leg. And the knee. I'm going to use smooth now, just to soften this area. And this is another area which I think NG Skin Tools outperforms Mayer's tool. The smooth algorithm seems much more predictable and stable. So just working my way down the spine again, softening some of the weights. I'll probably speed up some of the sections from here out, so don't worry, I don't work this quickly. Add some influence here. You see, we have some stray weights here, so let's remove those. We can use replace with an intensity set to zero. We are just working on one side for now, so don't do anything on the opposite. I'll just work my way down the spine, adjusting the weights. Let's test the front leg. So there's a large recess at the top here. We can weight this section back to the first spine joint to pull this back out. And continue it down here. Now use smooth to blend this into the rest of the body. Actually we have the scapular joint here, so we need to add its influence into this area too. So we can just start to add scapula to the filter. And they appear. The current influence is a little vague, so let's add this back in and make it more defined. I'll use add to build it up gradually. We want it to follow the length of the joint. And soften it back in. OK, we need to move the joint so we can see the influence. This area is still collapsing. Let's filter the front leg joints. OK, so 3 is down here, so let's work our way up. And we might as well work our way down the leg. So fill this in. Move down to 9, and remove the influence from up here. Ideally we want to try and restrict the influence to around each joint. Let's repose the leg. We want to see how the bends look. We also need to see this when smooth mesh has been applied. So we just press 3. That's better, we can see the folds and creases better now. So continue filling in around the joints. And we can adjust this area to close the crease. I'm going to drop back to the base mesh again so we can see the vertex positions. Using the softest brush means that we can do this gradually and carefully, and tease it closed. Check it with Smooth Mesh Enabled. OK, looks good. On to the next joint. 
To adjust the brush size, we just hold B and then scrub with the left mouse button. OK, we need to remove the influence from here. And this elbow or knee area needs softening too. It needs to open up as the leg bends. Let's try smooth. Hmm, OK, that's not working. Let's smooth around here first. We can go back to the previous joint and add some more influence to that, pulling the vertices apart. Now smooth. OK, the next joint down. And do the same, adding influence to pull the vertices down, opening this area up. And soften it back again. We're just going to continue now working our way down the rest of the leg. Filling out the crease here. We're defining more of a bend. And soften the knee. When it comes to the paw, we actually need the metacarpus joint to influence this, just because of how we set up the roll and twist joints. We can quickly filter those and make sure the paw is weighted to it. Actually, first let's pose it so the toes are bent, so we can see how they interact with the paw and when they bend. Let's fill in the bulk of the paw. And check what this is like when the paw moves back onto the heel. Ah, so it looks like too much of it is influenced. We need the front ribbon joints again. Joint number one was at the bottom. We now know we don't actually need this joint to influence the leg, so let's just flood this with a zero intensity which will flush out its influence. The next joint up is two, so let's soften the transition to the paw. We probably need to use add now to fill this area out. OK, so I think you kind of get the idea of how I work when I'm painting weights. So I'm just going to speed through the toes next. It's just a case of making sure each joint influences just the area it's supposed to and then soften it back in so you get a more natural deformation. Just remember to fill out the areas which bend so you get the folds and creases to look correct. OK, now the front leg has been edited, it's time to look at mirroring these weights across to the opposite side. 
Let's pose the right leg so it's in roughly the same pose. And we're going to simply mirror the left to the right. So we just click mirror. So you see we have a few problems now. The right leg has moved away from the joints. In fact, it's instead been weighted to the left leg. You can see if I move the left paw control, it follows. So the weights haven't copied correctly. It's the same with the rear leg. So what's going on? Let's go to the mirror tab. Here we have all the options associated with mirroring weights. So we can choose the direction. Here is the standard left to right. But there are a few other options available, like guess from stroke and flip. So guess from stroke will basically detect which side of the model you last painted on and then copy the weights across to the opposite side. We can adjust the seam width if we wanted to, and this will just soften the seam across the plane that you're mirroring the weights. And we can choose to mirror the weight or the layer mask or both. Next you can adjust how each vertex weight is transferred. So again the standard closest point on surface or you can even use the UV layout. Down here we have the main options that I want to show you and this is quite a powerful feature in NG skin tools. Let's open the Influence Associations. So here we have a list of the joints. We have the source joints on the left and the destination ones on the right. So here the left scapula will copy its weights to the right scapula. Although you will notice that the arrows between the names point both ways. This just means you can copy both ways if needed. You can change this with the buttons below. So you can choose to link both ways as this is, or one way. Let's select the nostrils and zoom in a little. These joints are highlighted blue to show both the source and the destination, although it's very faint. If I deselect and select again, you should see them. So when I click mirror, the tool is checking this list and seeing which joints to copy from and where they're being copied to. And this is really handy as I've had instances in the past where I needed to move the weights when mirroring, so I could just go in and change these rules. So these are all mapped, but you will notice that we have joints here with no mapping applied. And I suspect this is because the names have both an L underscore and an R underscore, so it got a little confused. This is why the right leg isn't being mapped correctly. So all we need to do is go through and map these manually. We have left rear metacarpus, so we need the right side. Here it is. So I'm holding control and selecting it so both are selected. All I do now is click link both ways and those are linked. As mentioned, you can also link one way if you need to, or you can use this to disconnect an existing link. Okay, next. Left rear index goes to the right rear index joint. Let's link those. And all we need to do is just go through the rest of the list and update these. So I'll just speed this up as I do those. OK, those are done. I'll select these and show you the highlighted joints again. So you can see those a little clearer, just to make sure they are being mirrored to the correct joint. If we move to the top of the list, we have all the new associations marked with an M because they are the ones that we created manually. And all these changes are stored in the NG Skin Tools node, so it's important that you don't delete it until you're absolutely sure you're finished, because you will need to redo all these associations if you do. OK, those are done, so let's try mirroring again. And that looks much better. And what I love about this tool is you can mirror no matter what pose your character or creature is in. When mirroring weights using May's own tools, you need to have the model in its bind pose or they don't copy across correctly. So with NG Skin Tools, it can actually speed up your workflow because you're not constantly moving between the bind pose and normal poses. So let's have a quick look at copying and pasting weights now. I'll filter the spine joints for now. 
Select one and click Paint. Let's switch to Grayscale 2. If we right click in the Influences tab, we get a menu which gives us a lot of options for the selected joint. We can copy the selected joint's weights and we have three options for pasting them. We can add to another joint's weights and that's just combine the two. We can subtract. So that's taken joint 5's influence away from 4. And we can replace the current joint's weights with the copied ones. List only active influences is just the same as this section here. There are some layer mask options here. Convert mask to transparency will bake the mask onto the layers and then clear it. Convert transparency to mask will do the opposite and convert all the transparent weights into a mask. We will look at layers next, so this will make more sense after that section. Invert will simply invert the weights. If we go back though, it breaks, so be careful when using this. Luckily, we can undo it. All these options are also available in the edit menu here. OK, let's have a look at layers in NG Skin Tools. So here I have two layers in this scene, head and body. The head layer is currently disabled. Let's activate the body layer weights. So here we have the main weights we've been working on so far. And here we have the layer mask. As this is the first base layer, the mask is full white because this needs to be solid. Think of this as the foundation to the skin weights. If we set this mask to zero, all the weight values would be zero and the vertices would more likely move back to the world root and the model would collapse. So we need this as the base level weights. If I move the jaw control, you see we don't have any facial weights just yet. The blinks aren't working either because the joints aren't influencing the model. Let's go to the head layer. I'm going to right click and enable this again. Let's now click paint again so we can look at the weights on this layer. And maybe filter the nose. So you can see we have weights defined on this layer. If we look at the mask, the weights which fall in the white area are the only ones being used. So this layer is focusing on the head and ignoring the body. In NG skin tool terms, the black darker area is referred to as the transparency because this is ignored. So it's like how layers work in paint packages. So now we have those face weights, but they are working in addition with the layer beneath it. If I disable the head layer again, the jaw snaps back because it's no longer being influenced by the jaw. Let's enable it again. So under the layers menu, you can add new layers, duplicate them, delete them and also merge them. If we open the properties, we can adjust the opacity if we want to globally reduce this layer's influence without disabling it completely. One feature I use all the time is the ability to export and import all the weight and layer information. We can do this from the file menu. So I can export everything to a file, like this one that I saved earlier. Let's reset the jaw and delete all the NG skin tools nodes in the scene. Let's also reset the weights back to the default values. So if I open the jaw again, Yep, the weights have been reverted back and are broken again. Let's turn on wireframe so you can see the model. Let's pose the spine. So yes, this is back to basics with all our hard work gone. I'll hide the joints for now. 
So we start again. Initialize the skinning layers, and this time go to File, Import Layers slash Weights. Select our file, and we have lots of options available. The tool doesn't just force them onto the rig. Vertex Transfer Mode tells us how to copy the weight values onto the model. Closest point on surface just applies them to the closest vertices. But you have two more options here. UV Space will use the model's UV layout instead of the vertex positions. So if you're transferring onto a different model, but with the same or similar UV map, this would be a better option. Vertex ID is best used if you're transferring back onto the same model. So we can use this one. Down here we have a list of associations, just like with the mirror weight section. So you can change how the weights are mapped if you need to. Let's say you're working on the same model, but the skeleton joint names have changed. You can update them here, so it copies from the old joint names to the new ones. Let's import these. Oh, before I do, there's also this option here, which will retain any layers already in use. We don't want to do that, so keep this disabled. Click Done. And you see the model has updated and the weights look better. The jaw isn't working, but that's because the head layer is disabled. So let's enable it. And the face weights are back now too. And this is another powerful feature of NG Skin Tools. After I've painted the weights on each model, I export the weights as a backup. If the rig then has to change and the model's reskinned, I know I can easily retain all the weights I've spent hours adjusting. It can also help when you're starting a new rig and you're using the same model for let's say the arms or the eyelashes. You can import the weights from a previous rig, saving you lots of time. Ok, so that's a quick overview of NG Skin Tools version 1. And like I said earlier, a lot of the features are similar in version 2. So let's take a look at the new version and see what's new. First, the UI has had a redesign. It's different but familiar. And straight away it recognises that we have been using an older version, so it asks if we want to convert the layers. So let's do that. And here we go, our head and body layer. And we have the influencers listed down the right side. Let's activate painting. You will see that the model is now multicoloured, just like we had with version 1. Let's select some joints. Actually, we will filter the spine joints for now. That's better. So we can select the joints as before, and we can see the influence in white, but it's only just visible. If you look at the influence display, it says grayscale, but we are using multicoloured, so this is a bit of a bug. Let's change it now anyway. We have an extra option now. Current influence coloured. So this gives a heat map effect, which is a lot easier to read than the multicoloured option. But that option does show you the influence of every joint, so it is useful. Let's switch to grayscale. So we have all our spine weights. We have the same mask. The head layer is disabled, as it was before. So the jaw has no influence. We can click the eye icon next to it to quickly enable it, which is better than the menu option. And that works now. There's the mask 2, and again this is just as it worked in version 1. You will notice to the left there's a new toggle help label. We can press H, and it brings up a list of available hotkeys. Let's change some of these options so we can do some painting. So we can hold B to adjust the brush size. What we can also do is use Shift to quickly switch to Smooth, which is great and aligns with most sculpting applications. Just like using Control to invert the brush, so it removes instead of adds. Another useful addition is the ability to focus on the current influence. So if we press F, the camera moves to the spine joint. 
and we can now pan around it as we paint. Control and F will quickly flood the model for you. Pressing I will bring up a quick menu so you can adjust the intensity. One of my favourite tools is the Select Influence tool, activated by holding S. This makes selection so much easier. All we need to do now is hover over a sphere and let go to quickly select it. So if we select the head, the camera isn't working well so we can't really focus as we're painting. So what we can do is press F to focus again on that joint. Another example is if I now select the tail. It's difficult to work on that area because the camera is focused on the head. So we just press F to refocus. Now I know we could select the joint and focus manually, but that would mean dropping out of the app. This is a small thing, but it helps maintain the workflow. You see, that's much better. You'll probably notice that once I start painting, the model drops down to its base proxy mesh. And this is one of the things I don't like about this update. We can use the show original mesh button here, but then we lose the weight map, so we can't see the weight information as we paint. So I would need to disable this again to see the coloured map, which feels like a step backwards to me. Another improvement is the speed of the interactive mirror tool, which is pretty much instant now. Whereas in version 1, there was a slight delay with each stroke. On the surface, the mirror tools look the same, but the influence mapping has been overhauled. Let's take a look. So you see, things look a lot more complicated now, but we have more control over how the joints are mapped. Especially here with the naming scheme section. So we can add more wildcards, which will help the tool as it's automatically setting up these rules. So overall, version 2 is a mixed bag really. Lots of improvements, but I feel it does still need a bit of work before I transfer over completely. Hopefully there will be updates soon, which mean that I can do that. Okay, there we go. Dino has been skinned, and we've had a look at NG skin tools and my own workflow when using it. I have to add that there are more tools inside NG Skin Tools for you to experiment with. I've just focused on the main ones I used in this video. So what's next for our rig? Well, it's not ready to be signed off and passed to an animator just yet. We still need to add in root control support, so the dog can be scaled and repositioned in a scene. The rig also needs to be locked down too, so it's not easily broken. So in the next final video in the series, unless I think of some bonus material to add, we will add those updates and complete the rig. Okay, another video over. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching right to the end and remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below or alternatively, why not join the AntCGI community Discord group, where me or other members of the community will be more than happy to help. Remember to help support future content and keep these videos free, please visit the AntCGI store or join the AntCGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.